starting turn five, some hard to decide choices. Uh, but I opened things up with uh, Nansudi char um, starting a charge towards those cav that were back here or whatever. Well, they countercharged because getting hit with a charge sucks, I guess. It's hard to tell. It would be in the forest where both would be at value one. Uh, which might, which probably would have been better. <laughs> the counter charge turned out being an attack of one to two. Now, value one means steps matter. And it turned out I had taken some hits. I had like five steps. It would have been six to five. That would have been a much, uh, a much better result, I believe. Uh, it would have ended up being on the one-to-one, -one, but it would have been heavy cav with a leader. It would have been at minus three on here, probably pretty good. However, <laughs> I had the, oh, can't let myself be charged without countercharging. So I countercharged and ran up against the heavy cav. Bad, bad numbers because now the melee value comes into play. And actually, I got an elimination result. <laughs> Um, actually, it would have been one-on-one. -on -one. Um, it would have been a plus three. So, you know, if it had been the same kind of die roll, it would have gotten me around a six, which would have been no damage to the French and a disorder to the Austrian Bavarians, which would have been uh, certainly much better for the, 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 uh, for the Austrian side. But... Still essentially the same effect. I've cleared the, the path now. Pretty much the key to the whole thing. Now I could turn my artillery, start smashing into this. The majority of the Austrian forces <coughs> have not um, been operating. We do have a force over here that's some threat to the flank of that line of guns. Freon, I mean, his forces are deploying but they still haven't been brought into play, essentially. <laughs> um, this scenario is one where I don't think you can fiddle around. There are no special rules for it, but I don't think you can fiddle around with the special rules, uh, the, the optional rules for the Imperial Guard in this. They're necessary for this battle. I, they're all, the battle has already been lost at Leipzig, and they're trying to cover the retreat. Um, here, and I, I don't think you can treat them as anything except just normal units. Um, not give them the huge penalty that I think is intended or bonus that is written into the rules for misusing the guard. Um, over here, the protection I have is I have Sebastiani's cavalry uh, up here, which makes it very, very difficult for the Austrians to come forward. They will get their infantry countercharged all over the place, and no chance to convert to square before the countercharge happens. They could convert to, well, so they could move into a space and convert to square, but here's the problem the countercharge happens before they get the chance to convert to square, so boom. You know? And again, it's the two hex cav, but is it really? I'd have my cav a hex closer if if necessary. Um, but that should provide enough protection along with uh, Victor's couple of units against this. The fire here wasn't terribly effective, but there there isn't much left of, uh, what's his name? Uh, Lamotte. Uh, very French sounding name for a Bavarian. Uh, his forces that are there. And so really, Geez, man, I, I, I just don't know what to do, you know? I feel like, I feel like the Austro-Bavarians have lost the battle already. Um, and if that first day goes as well as it appears to be going for the French, what can you do, you know? Um, I could pull back. Maybe I could pull off the board and try to make up some rules that they'd come back or something. I could pull back to Hanau, where I'm somewhat protected. But then what do I do if the French start leaving the map and crap like that? I, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. 
But it's time for me to write some rules and uh, some orders and try to uh, save that Austro-Bavarian force. Here's the thing. This is the army that is trying to prevent this advance, right? I've got reinforcements coming today. They're all French. The reinforcements that are coming tomorrow are all French. <laughs> you know, uh, this stuff just got brushed out of the way. Yes, it's a smaller force, but the way it was deployed, the difficulty in getting um, Fresnel into position, some of it is my failure with orders. You know, it took me a while to give him orders, whatever, but I thought that I had enough to deal with the flank here, and I kind of do, but that cav, you know, it did more than its duty in terms of time. It held off uh, the advance of the guard. <laughs> Bavarians are not covered in here as being army commanders, going to be a pretty rare situation. Uh, I don't think there was anything in the scenario specific instructions which talks about how many orders yeah I don't see anything. Oh wait, turn 8 we get some Austrians. Oh okay, we get couple Cossacks. So not all of that is uh, um, Cossacks and Partisans. Um, so it's not as one-sided as it seems, but that's not stuff that's going to turn the tide. If you take a look at the morale values on those, those are sixes. It's not the kind of thing that can hold the line very long. Um, I don't see any rules about orders there. Uh, I can't imagine a Bavarian leader being considered better than anyone else in particular. So the fact that the Austrians, Sweden and Spain, get one order per turn, and Russia, Prussia of, and England, but Prussia eventually gets better order writing capabilities. But I'm guessing De Reed only gets one order per turn, which means it's time to start running around and pulling people back, I guess. Now, this is where uh, I find the defensive uh, situations more difficult than anything else. There's no, that I remember, um, there's no kind of, oh yeah, we're all just going to fall back type of order that you can give across the, the army. Now, there's the failure of army morale which kind of does that, but that's not what you want because your whole army is disordered pretty much then. So what we're looking at is I've got to walk from person to person or send written orders one per turn, which may or may not be accepted, from person to person to start pulling these units out of here. It makes reacting on defense really, really difficult. It's a reason why Dean Essex rule sets while they had defensive orders in them, kind of pulled back from, like, they were put in as an optional rule, and I feel like the, the later scenarios that were written, for CWB at least, were more and more along the lines of, yeah, don't use defensive orders, you just have to be able to defend. Um, I never found having to hold your ground being difficult, I found the difficult thing being maneuvering from place to place, which you still needed orders for. So in this case, withdrawing is the hard part. That's the number of orders you have to write. So now I have to write orders for Clanau. That's who I'm standing on. But I got to figure out what the hell I want him to do. You know, I have no idea what the French attack is going to be. And this makes some sense, you know, right? I have to set up my defensive positioning, but that's hard to do, especially as you're doing it piecemeal. I'm not setting up a defensive line like I would say at the beginning of a scenario or something. I'm trying to predict what the hell I'm going to do with Fresnel, or no, in this case, Clonau, um, to try try and do something here <laughs> and what exactly that's hard to tell so victory conditions on the other one have to do with this hex controlling that 
and all Marmont's units leave by the road. Marmont is this command coming in here, I guess. Uh, but victory conditions for this part have to do with no allied units north of Kinzig, which is just goofy because they can jump across anywhere on the board and get themselves victory points. Um, and everything else is just based on casualties versus French uh, units exiting towards Frankfurt. And then for the Allies, if they leave by Frankfurt, an Allied unit doing that gets them 20 points. I don't know why. Any unit, any unit on the road from Leipzig to Frankfurt, that may be a little harder. It would actually be possible to patrol this whole road. Um, is worth 20 points. Hanau itself is worth 20 points. So my guess is I can probably run someone off the road and get Hanau, I'm hold, hoping I can hold it, which gets me to 40 points versus whatever the French can gather off of casualty, you know, the better casualty ratio. Because there's basically no way I can prevent um, the Austrians from jumping across. So I think, even though this is the stupidest ass person to do this, I've got this feeling of like trying to escape uh, off Frankfurt with him. I don't know. The effect of all of this is the Bavarian Austrians are trying to follow their attack orders <laughs> that they had, thinking I must be on the attack, most of the French forces in here, and I'm supposed to be able to, you know, hold things and whatever and have some sort of survival here. And Hanau is not that important, especially in the two-day scenario here. So this, this has to be the time when I can. Well, it hasn't turned out that way. So the orders I gave were to Klanau, and he's, uh, he's not got them yet. He's actually going to go back to Hanau. I think that's the safest. Everything else I can kind of try to figure out um, around that. Uh, Certainly going here is too far. Trying to position people here in the woods, you know, that's a way to get that 20 or 30 points or whatever really easily away from the French because fighting in those woods is probably just about impossible. But, um, but Becker's still had a turn before he can abandon his orders. So I pushed a little bit. I don't want to face the cav. Um, we're going to see some fire there. Lamont is under orders and I have to get him out of here. Most of his units are disordered so I can retreat them back, but there's a couple of them that are having to cover the rear guard. I'm kind of cheating with Splenny. He's almost a Cav Corps except for this unit. Uh, so I am withdrawing him kind of from his defensive line. Otherwise he'd have to try to hold something here and that just looks like disaster. Um, I can certainly call off his orders, but that still doesn't let me pull back, you know, right? Uh, and um, who else? Well, Fresnel is coming across the bridge now with his planned attack to get himself massacred by the artillery. And this is, so here's the thing. I feel comfortable with the way these orders work in, in CWB, certainly. A little bit. Uh, maybe a little weaker on, on the NBS side of things simply because uh, probably the integration of the cab and whatnot. I just don't feel comfortable that like I understand what a unit's capacity to exist is here. I mean, things just dissolve so fast under that artillery fire or whatever that this system, uh, I don't know. There's aspects I liked about it. I certainly... I think I had fun with the Waterloo scenario, but I'm growing more and more down on it. I don't know. See routing coming from the artillery fire back there, trying to skirt the river, because uh, I can't cross it with a retreat, but I guess I can move closer to the enemy. <laughs> I don't know. Things are looking really, really bad for the uh, Austro-Bavarians now. Here's the problem. I have to look up what the um, 
eh, what the percentage is. And I don't remember where the fuck that is. Army morale. 60 step loss for the Austrians. Now, here's where it gets painful. I could count the little losses I've taken, but I also have to figure out the routes and disorders to see if that adds up to 60. And this is where the other system, the one used in the NIR stat, makes more sense, or at least is functional. Uh, it, there's no way to count how many steps are you know, knock are, are routed or whatever, you know, and there's just nothing pleasant here. Because if I count these at the steps on the counter, I, I don't know whether or not, you know, I have to, I have to deal with this, the same, the markings for the losses on them here. So I can count all the losses, but somewhere along the line, I'm going to have to look up individual units uh, number-wise. And remember, that's painful on the eyes when they're in column status, which the routed and disordered units are, to see how many additional steps to add or how many to subtract, whatever, you know. An idea, I was above 60 total. If I count all the steps on the disordered routed units, and all the steps lost. I got down to 59 with this unit, so I can look pretty quickly. Uh, unit 39, probably not. And 23. So that's two more. So I'm at 57 steps lost already, which means I'm real close to uh, the Army morale demoralization level. Now that's demoralization. The other is, I can't remember the terms that are used here. I think demoralization is the lower level. I don't, I guess there's no desperate threshold in this case. Because there's no special rules there. Um, but demoralization causes all the good units to make another morale check, all, all the good morale units to make another check. And it can basically break, you know, the army fairly heavily. This was after rally attempts, which doesn't look like we got anything. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, maybe. And that'll put me to turn six. And yeah, this is just a chore, especially if there's a moralization factor. I am going to have this obnoxious counting at the end of every turn for the rest of the scenario. And I'm really beginning to not want to play this. Now here on turn six, and I, I got to tell you, we're running out of counters, the numerical counters. I can pull them out of other games. <coughs> I don't really like to do that if I can avoid it. Um, this one does not come up, does not come with enough uh, to manage the game. You know, they really, they went with a small counter sheet. I'm assuming there were no extra pieces. It's been a while since I punched and clipped it, so I can't remember. Uh, maybe a few too, you know, maybe they could skimp on one replacement counter. Uh, beyond that, it's really hard to say. You need the charge counters. I haven't been using my fucking skirmishers. Why? Uh, good question. <laughs> they don't feel like being in a Napoleonic battle, I guess. Um, right now there's no need. Freon is charging up against stuff uh, that he doesn't really want to. Skirmishers are horribly ineffective if they're facing any kind of rough terrain. They basically, you know, fear. But, uh, they do reduce your casualties, and we're getting higher than expected casualties, so, well. Uh, on the other hand, I don't have many light units, and I think I was kind of playing without the advanced rules for skirmishers, because I caught myself a couple of times. This is the fault of uh, the Siege of Danzig, which doesn't, uh, 
which I chose not to use any advanced rules for. Um, well, I chose not to use the advanced skirmisher rules. Why? I don't remember. <laughs> I really don't remember. Um, but, yeah. So, I think I was using the base skirmisher rules so far. And maybe, maybe I'll stick with that. Um, because I know I was making decisions. There were some, some lights. And I was like, oh, deploy them as, as skirmisher type units instead. Uh, but all units have the capacity to spew out skirmishers. I took a look. Somebody else played out a very, very detailed uh, playthrough that looked completely different than mine. They basically charged with their French instead of using the artillery to cover and got a very, very different feel to the game. Um, the artillery is too powerful to allow it to do that, though. And that's what we see here. Freon has charged forward and uh, is finally kind of following his rules, but he's basically hitting garbage now, uh, or his orders. Uh, confuse the word rules and orders. Uh, Nansudi wanted to give his cav a rest. I don't have a real use for them right now. I'll move them into position a little later, probably over here. Uh, I, I don't think they were using written orders. In fact, I think they were just using command and control rules in the, that series of videos, which, again, that has been a major impact because that has caused difficulties with uh, what the Austrian, how quickly the Austrians have been able to react. It's really hard to react as the, defend, as the defending player. Uh, of course, I gave the Austrians offensive orders, so I don't know. Um, and then drew its artillery, and this is where the counters, that should be a one. I don't have any, enough ones. I don't have enough fives either, but <laughs> because that turn just passed. Um, but yeah, the artillery is turning to just, you know, obliterate what uh, Austrian and Bavarians are across the river. My error. Um, remember when I drew in boxes for those artilleries? I don't think I should have. Uh, I found the two that I drew it in on, which were 07 and 08. The counters both say there's only two steps on those. Uh, I'm assuming that these... I, I don't know. So it's a couple of reserve artillery that have this rule. Somewhere... The artillery of the old guard, two French artillery, the 17 and 18, yeah. So I drew in extra steps and I've gotten rid of those. Uh, so this unit is actually at half firepower now. And this is one of the difficulties I have with the system is that it works pretty well using this casualty chart for the infantry um, for fire combat. Melee, you have to do lookups on here. Infantry for fire combat keeps its sta stat no matter how much you beat it up, which we could have words one way or another about, <coughs> but it simplifies the mechanism of the game. Uh, and there's a little bit of a reason for it, which is that it's essentially frontage and capability of the firepower in the front more than anything else, and that a unit reduced enough, uh, reduced most of the way, still provides the same frontage. But I'm not sure about reduced down to one step. You know, <laughs> what you generally see is larger units have larger firepower, so it doesn't quite work that way for line formation. Um, also, you would be able to put more frontage in play with additional units and you're only allowed to fire out of your top unit in the stack, so it it just doesn't doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, although you wouldn't create too much density, so um, but a couple of smaller units would be able to get the firepower of a larger unit in that case. Anyway, I prefer the NBS system for that. However, that requires lookups for every fire combat. But for artillery. 
once artillery starts taking ca real casualties, you have to look up every artillery fire on the sheet, and it's easier to forget. Um, anyway, all I did was the uh, uh, coalition firepower, uh, fire phase. Uh, I have not done the offensive fire phase here. Something else, I forgot to fire this artillery, so I'm going to fire it as the French are firing. Um, but they blew away those Bavarians that are standing there because of the, the low morale they have. They're not facing the infantry of the old guard, but <laughs> they're still shitty units. Uh, out of counters, and I'm using like a 7 as a 1 right now because whatever. I'm out of the 5s, I'm out of the 1s. The 5s look like 10s, so or have 10 on the back, so that was kind of helpful, but now i got to remember this one. Um... But this particular unit, 29, artillery 5, is shown as three steps on here. It's not on the counter. It's a two-step. There's no special call-out about a three-step Bavarian artillery. So I'm going to treat that as a misprint. Right now, this sheet is going to get thrown away. I've already pen-marked it. I, I, I did the pen markings mistakes here. i got to correct that. That's fine. But I also accidentally marked off a casualty as a pen, so it's kind of unusable anyway. Not going to recount. Um, the Bavarian army, the Bavarian Austrian army is clearly taken more losses, routes, etc. from the end of the last turn. And they were three points off. They've clearly taken way more than that. There's units that just disintegrated, etc. We had the routing here. So I'm going to hit them with the army demoralization rule, which sends them flying. We have the loss of units got me some of my counters back. So right now, I think the only illicit counters is a 10 here. I think that's the only one that doesn't belong. What's this one? This one is a six. Let me make sure there are no other ones kicking around that shouldn't be. I think that's it. Hey, the game's double multi-use of counters, etc., causes additional problems. Uh, if you don't play with the fatigue rules, they're not a big deal, but it does start to increase the uh, confusion value of it. The problem is... Yeah. The base game is, you know, it's like playing a Napoleon at Waterloo system. It, it's a little bit more. It's like a very, very light um, firepower minis type game. And I, indeed, the only time I've played Napoleonic minis was about as light as the base game of this. Um, that was quite some time ago, back in the 90s. And I was really unhappy with that system, but the group I was in liked lighter games for the most part. Uh, one exception that we had fun with, which was uh, Age of Reason stuff. I, somebody just managed to bring that game to the group somehow. But <laughs> different factions within the group. <laughs> um, the group that I was playing with most often out of the grouping was uh, very much into very light stuff. And we played a bunch of light Napoleonics, and uh, I was pretty unhappy with it. And the Civil War stuff they did was light, too, but who cares? It's Civil War. It doesn't require a whole hell of a lot of complexity. Um, but <laughs> when you add all the, all the uh, options into this game it, system, it feels pretty decent in a lot of ways. I mean, it feels like it's covering all the in, all the issues to some extent that you're trying to do. There are some c corners being cut to try to make it easier to play, though not necessarily easier to cope with the rules uh, <laughs> compared to, you know, NBS. But overall, I get the rules writing aspects. I, I, I get units that can't just press forever, you know, with the fatigue order rules. Uh, I get, yeah, there we go, orders and rules getting confused again. Um, I get, uh, what else? 
the calf differentials are kind of interesting, although they brought their own problems into the game, I think. But yeah, anyway, time time for me. Yeah, but the thing is, the representation of all the information that you need overloads the numeric counters, uh, and it just it just starts causing real real issues. Part of me says I should just say screw it, and I, I think I've done this with some other games, but not many. I don't sell my games. I might as well fucking just pull out numeric counters from a different version of the game and use those, you know, from a different game in the series. But it's just so hard for me to do that. I know somebody who did that with uh, the GBOH stuff. They just said, screw it. I'm going to put all kind of GBOH stuff into, you know, in, 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 because all the markers and everything... Uh, are basically the same across all, all the game systems. But the problem is, which one do they sit in then? You know, <laughs> I guess I, I could keep track of which counters I've moved from one game to another and then move them back. Just so the number's right, I'm fine. I mean, they're the same counters. But, yeah. Minimal effect. One Cav took uh, to the run. Oh, there's a 10 as well. So, yeah, I'm back out of counter mix again. Um... That means there's a, not a permanent, but there's a minus one on the morale for all the coalition forces now until such a time as enough units rally to bring me over the 60 and I remember to count again. It's unlikely to actually happen. <laughs> it really looks like this is a route. With such a route going on, I feel like I should be able to kind of cancel my orders and say, screw it, we're falling back. You know, <laughs> hey dudes, uh, no. Um, unless there's sort of a local superiority. Like here there's a local superiority, so I'd feel kind of iffy about canceling these orders automatically. But these guys, you know, I don't know. But you gotta follow your orders, man. That's, that's what written orders are all about. Unless, unless they write something in, I can go for an initiative check. That's the best I got. And unlike NBS, you don't have any penalty to pay for failing an initiative check, except you have to keep following your orders. The mess of the... Uh, I'm in the midst of trying to move these pieces, and the mess of the command situation in this, some of... Becker's command was across the river, and I was moving it as if it's Fresnel because it was in with his units, and now I'm finding, wow, there's a bunch of Becker's stuff that's just le was back on the other side of the river, and I didn't really realize that these that the commands were segmented the way they were. So part of the problem with these units moving forward is they were with the wrong command. They should have uh, been moving forward earlier. Fresnel's uh, initial command should have got him across the river already, but it didn't yet. Um, his further command is the one that I was acting a little bit more swiftly. I was gathering Fresnel's like scattered forces that were his, I guess, his actual command not realizing that Becker had units across the river that couldn't move. I don't know how big a deal that is. Uh, <laughs> it actually is saving my units now, but I, I'm less interested in pulling Fresnel forward, I guess. I thought I had this huge force, and I'm like, all right, screw it. Let's go for the, let's go for the guard artillery if we break them or, or bust them up, and they're able to melee them in a couple of places. We can actually do something pretty impressive because the French just have their artillery right on the line there <laughs> Within charging distance But now that Becker's Has received orders to fall back to Hanau and his prior orders Were canceled And I don't want to do them. I can't find an I I don't know where the hell it is It's probably somewhere I, I, Trying to use these letters that are easily covered. I just hex numbers make so much damn sense. Why the hell?
hell would you write a game? <laughs> Why would you design a game? It's not like Legion can't put hex numbers on their maps. Uh, this is some weird issue with the designer where they don't want to put hex numbers uh, on, on the maps of any of this series. He never has. And it just really makes life very, very difficult. I understand in NBS, they kind of tell you, don't use a hex number, use a geographical location or whatever. But sometimes you can only refer to a, graph, uh, a geographical location by centering it on a hex number. You know, let's get on the unnamed stream. Yeah, that doesn't help either. Uh, near hex this. Well, now I've got things like four hexes away from H. You know, or stuff like that if I want to express something, you know, a center of gravity for, for, the, for the unit. It is really, really obnoxious. And if you make... You can't write rules without being able to reference what something is. What is this difficult terrain? How do I reference this? Difficult terrain, one, two, three, four hexes from the left side of the map in the center. I mean, I'm using so many words when all I needed was one number. Difficult terrain, near hex, you know. <laughs> there are attempts to rally, none of which succeeded. We got forces falling off the map. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put units that withdraw off the map somewhere other than the dead pile. The dead pile I'm gonna keep uh, separate because those units ain't coming back. But these guys that have retreated disordered, I feel like instead of recovering forces, they recover their capacity to be on the map for the next day. Making up rolls, right? You know? Uh, but I think that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good option there. And this is assuming I want to fight another day. I, I really want to call this. I feel like this battle's over, man. <laughs> I feel like the French are taking control. But... Given the way the rules, the, the victory conditions are stated, I'm having trouble with words recently. Um, where it's like their goal is no allied units north of the Kinzig. Well, that kind of means, I guess, I don't know, because the Kinzig starts here. So that means the French pretty much get control of most of that road that they need to control by the next day. So I think the French are expected to win this bat this part this day of the battle, and obviously they're going to win the next day. And I don't think this is a particularly interesting battle to tell you the truth. <laughs> the way I'm just seeing it, as long as as long as you can get those artillery deployed, you are going to bust up the coalition forces. You're just going to destroy them. And even if I had free activity to charge. Charging guns is not a pleasant thing, although they're poorly supported by infantry. If instead of using Freant to advance, I used him to protect the guns, it would get pretty much the same effect that I had. So uh, You can try charging the guns and throwing a flock of skirmishers out, and that reduces the damage you take for charging them, but it also means that you don't do a whole hell of a lot to them. You pick off a couple of, a couple of strength points, but you gonna melt away at close range anyway. Uh, yeah. I feel like I should start reading the rules to the next thing I'm planning on doing. So I really don't know if I want to fight another day of this. It's just, they're so, uh, the coalition is so overmatched. They're facing the fucking Imperial Guard, <laughs> you know? A weird position here with the French. Um, I've moved my units, Nansudi moving his cab forward to pursue down here. The only thing opposing me that's alive right now is Cav. Uh, giving Freon some rest. I figure I can... This is more problematic in NBS than it is in this series. But I figure I can kind of rest as I need to. <laughs> and in this case... Uh, he was he was at uh, he was already taking morale penalties, so being allowed to take a short rest makes sense. 
I don't really have much goal. I'm supposed to push to the Kinzig River, which I think I'm close enough to. Um, but the problem here is Victor. Victor has orders to march out to try to attack this space. Well, that's clearly no longer applicable. This isn't a matter of, oh no, that would be a disaster, although it would, uh, but it's like, yeah, that territory has been taken over. I feel like that gives me a right to cancel the order. Um, it's in view and he, he can't get there. It doesn't hurt that this was an order that I had from the beginning of the game. <laughs> and normally you can cancel an order after you've been pursuing it for three turns, but I put a time delay on it and now it just doesn't even make sense. The time delay was Freon engaging. Freon didn't engage until last turn. <laughs> and boy, did he. He just wiped the field. Um, so, you know, I'm just going to do that because otherwise he pulls McDonald up with him. He ran over there for some reason. Um... Uh, and the two artillery units and goes heading off into nowhere. And in and of itself, that would be okay, but these orders are clearly not applicable. Now, I do have the option to make the roll and try to assign him different orders that way. And that would be the more sort of by the book thing, but I feel like there are enough special cases in play here that I can just cancel that order. Fuck it. And here's the situation when at the end, not too different. Uh, Fresnel halted his movement to rest. But he's taking new orders on. So, the, you know, it feels a little like cheating, but this system is so much lighter than the NBS system in terms of how it handles everything. I think to some extent you can just say, well, you know, he could do that just fine if it weren't for the orders. And if I was playing the higher level of orders, he could do it just fine too. The higher level being you send orders to individual players. No player would march into these guns, you know? Um, in fact, you would have full flexibility in both those cases. Uh, <clears throat> it's only under the uh, written orders or the, t the attack defend type orders, that things get a little fuzzier. And I just don't feel like I should be handcuffed to something horrible, um, especially since there's no, you know, no opponent written orders or anything like that. Anyway, which is something that exists in NBS. Uh, we had one rally successful over here everyone else is just not happy and we did route that yeah I think I think everything's uh, in good place as we go into I guess the 430 turn now again to some extent yeah, clearly the the austro-bavarian army is destroyed uh, or, or is unable to stand and fight right now. So the question is, well, what, what the hell are they going to do? Well, they could rally in the course of the remaining turns and get a force together to hold the board. The bigger thing that they're really capable of doing is hiding out in Hanau. Um, but, you know, I could, again, dispatch a unit to go get me the victory points to win this scenario. I'm not going to really do that because I am looking at it as the two-day scenario trying to block the army as a whole, blah, blah, blah type stuff, where I don't feel like that kind of cheating applies. But unfortunately, the victory conditions to this scenario and the next one in its own other way uh, kind of just say, yeah, you can cheat if you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can game this game in a way that... It just doesn't represent, I mean, it's not what the designer intended. I know that. Uh, he's not that kind of player, but, although he is that kind of seller. Uh, <laughs> but, but it's like, uh, there's just, 
these last couple Legion ones I've looked at, and I don't remember being as happy with the Spanish one as I could have been. Um, just aren't living up to what the effort on the scenarios was in some of the earlier ones. I remember having problems with the Waterloo thing too, though, getting it all to mesh together. But that's such a glorious thing, and such a big battle, and so important, and you know you're going to get a good battle out of it, that, like, it feels more worthwhile to try to figure the shit out for something you're going to play for a month, <laughs> or whatever. For something like this, honestly, this is an afternoon game or whatever, you know? It's, it's not a big battle. All right, push through the entire turn there. Reinforcements coming on, some Russians over here, Cossacks and something else. I think infantry, actually. No, it can't be. Way too fast. Oh, what the fuck there? Oh, one and oh, two. Well, they're marked, no. They're marked with the person who's in charge of them. But, they're shitty, they're fast. Uh, exactly the same as the Cossacks. So we'll call them Cossacks. I think one of them's not. And Marmont showing up, Napoleon's gone over to go talk to him. Moving on slowly, because he's trickling in. Of course, he won't have time to affect this battle. <coughs> the battle's going to be over before I can get anybody off on the Frankfurt route. Uh, which is a big deal because I think I would disallow units from returning that left that way, uh, if that was the case. We had one unit left in that direction. Uh, some more firing happening. It had actually quite a uh, splayer or whatever here. has done quite a bit of rallying, but uh, I am facing a time limit. One thing I noticed that's painful, this they fixed in the Germany battles. I don't know which one was first. I thought that one, I don't know. Um, these are fours, they should have nines on the other side. Neither the sixes nor the nines have any underlines, so they look exactly the same. And you just gotta remember. <laughs> or draw on your counters, you know, but I feel like it's not worth the effort. You know, it's like, yeah, I don't sell my games, I probably should, but I just don't think I'm going to ever dig this one out again. Uh, my life's not that long. And another full turn out of the way. Nothing too exciting happening. The Austrians trying to get control of their route, basically. Um, and rallying some units, trying to make sure that we hold Hanau. Uh, if we can keep that, I feel like, yeah, we can maybe contest the next day. If we can't keep that, it's not so certain. Now, one bright spot in my little wor world down here is Splenny. He, he's been rallying his units somehow, <laughs> which is kind of weird. Um, these others not doing such a great job on the rallying, but there are more units that are in good shape over here. The danger routing units could leave the board, but they can come back for the next day by the way I'm judging things. For the, there was very little fire this turn because Druitt uh, flipped his artillery. In order to move it forward at all, basically, he had to expend more than half the movement point. He had to expend movement points so that he could not um, unlimber. So a couple of guns moved forward a little bit uh, more decisively than that. Napoleon couldn't figure out what to do with Marmont, so he's heading back to go have a talk to Druid uh, because I don't know what the hell. I had to resort to those. I don't have to keep resorting to them. Um, I could use something like this just for the fatigue levels, and it would actually maybe be better. The problem, of course, is that it's when the fatigue hits five increments of fatigue and actually gets a real fatigue step where there's a penalty, which is where the numbers become particularly annoying. But there's just not enough numbers in this counter set to support um, 
the level of fatigue that, uh, you know. Some numbers are more commonly used than others, and you really need a nice pool of counters uh, to be able uh, to play these games effectively. Again, I could pull things from one of the other games in the series, but I just don't want to. It's kind of nice to see. I'm not the only person who thinks these counters are uh, pretty enough and everything. I think I may be the only person who thinks that the artillery and the cav are too easy to uh, be uncertain of what you're facing. Uh, the place that you can tell is the number here, except for our, uh, uh, horse artillery. I'm trying to look to see. So it just, it looks too close to me. Uh, when I when I take a quick look at what the the infantry and it may be even closer with the horse artillery because they may have horses in front instead of uh, <clears throat> it may just look less I don't know <laughs> whatever but the number doesn't help you in that case um, and that that's been sort of my continuous uh, problem with this but the other thing is it is fucking impossible to read the number on this uh, the unit ID I mean. This is like looking under a magnifying glass. Uh, was that like six times or something? You know, so that's a, that's a pretty strong magnification level, and they're absolutely vital to indexing into here. And other people are at least agreeing with that. Um, I made a mistake though. I mean, can I come to uh, this? This game came up, or this series came up on a prettiest counters type of thread. Um, where I was talking about, and, and this is the problem, I can't always remember things well. I was talking about the Dresden, the, uh, uh, the La Bata series. And honestly, those counters actually are very pretty. And I think I said so when I was playing the game. Um, they're a little hard to tell what's going on. Uh, the backside of the counters is dull as hell and you can't tell whose is what uh, <laughs> because it's just like gray or kind of white and they're close enough in color you get a little tobacco smudge on it and uh, or a little bit of handling and they look exactly the same um but uh those actually have numbers and values on them and they're fairly clear there might have been a few things where i was like i might have had some issues with some of them but uh I was I was conflating them with uh, the counters from the Red Sash games. And I got Summer Scrawl. That's the only one I've done yet, uh, which I found really were an impediment to the game. Basically, they use that same uniform uh, for the front of the counter as how you show what a counter is, which I find confusing. Um, you're not able to tell formations and stuff like that as easily as you would like to. It's got a lot of it's got a lot of hindrances uh, where the presentation is not giving you the information you need to play the game as well as possible. But in the Red Sash games, there's absolutely nothing of value on the front of the counter except for this confusing uniform because you're kind of hiding the information on the back of the counter. Uh, I, 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 for whatever reason, I thought that Labatt did the same thing. And here we're just wandering off into a random tangent. Mainly because <laughs> I'm not terribly enjoying this. Although it definitely gets easier once one side kind of routes and all you're doing is chasing it. But um, I'm afraid I'm not going to enjoy what's my kind of rest between this and Leipzig. And then I'm also just like, there's just nothing in life I enjoy. You know, I'm fucking making sure that my brain's not working by watching videos and shit all the time. Or uh, playing really, really inane video, uh, video uh, computer games. They're not even video games. Just stuff that like keeps me from ever having to think. It's a bad time of year. My wife died, you know, almost a, a year ago. It's... Uh, coming up about a week, about a week from now. And it's a bad time of the year for me all the time, but I, and I, I'm in that funk that I'm usually in in the winter, and on top of that, I just, I, I can't bring myself to exist. <laughs>
Push their guns up to the river and start uh, trading some fire with the one artillery piece that's ordered to, uh, that's unlimbered. <laughs> There's a bunch of artillery that's ordered to defend this bridge. Uh, turns out the command, and I don't know because things were so mixed up at the beginning in terms of like pieces with the wrong commands and stuff. But turns out a lot of Fresnel's force, well, the Fresnel, Clanau combined, whatever, uh, is just artillery. And what's not is either under Clanau, sitting here in Hanau, or running away. <laughs> so there's almost no infantry there to de defend this, and that's a bit of a problem. Um, however, Nobody's got orders to make their way up there. And Napoleon couldn't make up his mind. He went back to go talk to Marmont, basically thinking, you know, if I, it's late in the game. If I cordon the river, as long as the Austrians don't do something cheap, they're not going to be north of the Kinzig, except maybe here. And I don't know. <laughs> you know I don't know what that counts as. They're definitely north of the main. Is anything... You know, is the west of the Kinzig north of it? I, I don't know. <laughs> but um, I'm probably going to count it as such just so that I don't have to cheat. Because honestly, this is the important route. And if you got forces operating out here, the French do not have a free, free pass to march down the road. And so trying to use logic of the situation rather than following the victory conditions as defined. Um, yeah. Now we're basically at the end of the day of battle. I mean, there, we're exchanging artillery fire. I don't know what is going to happen between days, <laughs> you know, because there's sort of the, there, there's no turns or anything like there would be in the overnight turns. I think the choice is, if you want to reposition units, you don't get to rest. If you reposition units, uh, you get a certain level of recovery. Um, and I'll, I'll just fake it. But I think what it basically means is the forces are going to sit where they are. How much repositioning would I allow? Jesus, I mean, you'd have a lot of time to move your units. And they're, especially if they're behind enemy lines, they're going to be able to move relatively freely. So uh, maybe just, I don't know, reposition shit if you want to. <laughs> I really don't know. I really don't know. And it feels like there should be a limited amount of repositioning anyway. Like if I don't have my guns unlimbered or whatever, I should be able to. Shit like that. Um, so I'll just try to make something up uh, to, to handle the situation of... Uh, because I, I, you should get at least a turn's worth of movement, I think, um, in addition to everything else. If you want more than that, you won't get the recovery. That sounds like a fair compromise. Plus, you know, then these guys, they're going to be coming back on. And when are they going to come back on? I don't know. Again, I'll make that shit up. Uh, one thing, this scenario actually only lasts 12 turns. A lot of the games in the series have little 11 and 12 markers, and they kind of, well, the, uh, the three battles in Germany had them. <coughs> and they kind of stopped there. And many, many of the scenarios in the series go well beyond 12 turns, so it doesn't really help to have those extra counters. So we've got uh, these guys who are routing, huh, yeah, um, and when you route, you put a turn in advance. So they're routing on turn 11 in terms of when they can figure out their recovery turn. And I'm just marking that using ones. That could be a potential problem. It's not in this situation. But it is possible. There could be something that's... Mo you do see ones on here, but they're the fatigue markers. Um, you could see something where, you know... There's stuff that's been on the map for like 10 turns, especially if it's hiding in a village or something. Hasn't been able to rally, but hasn't done anything, you know. Uh, but, you know, is, is still disordered and still on the map. Doesn't just run away. Uh, kind of avoided that problem in the three battles of Germany by like, well, the Jena Auerstadt, by just like ignoring the fact that you can cower 
in cover <laughs> as long as you like. A hell of a lot happened in the French turn here on turn 11. Uh, except I'm running out of counters, you know. Standard mechanical bookkeeping crap from the game. Uh, Mansudi made a charge against the Cav here. They were unable to counter charge, failures, whatever. One of the units uh, was broken. Uh, step was lost on each side. That's about it. Not much of an impact, but, you know. Um, meanwhile, I've kind of halted because I'm not going to be able to take the bridge. And Freant has orders to move forward, but it would just cover the guns and cause all kind of problems. And I'm like, so one of the things is I'm starting to take the game, and I think this is how you enjoy this series. I'm taking the game less seriously. Uh, orders, yeah, I'm going to treat them vaguely, not the way that I do in CWB NBS, where there's really strict rules that sort of cover the orders, and they help guide you a little bit better. So I would be able to do things uh, to halt, to slow down the orders. You, you still got to take things with a grain of salt and whatever, but... Um, but there's just so much here that I feel like I'm having to fill in and make up rules for. And I think that's how I managed to enjoy the prior uh, scenario, the prior uh, scenarios in the series is that, yeah, you know, just accept that it's light. It's trying to give you a vague idea of what the rules are, but you're going to have to fill shit in. And I don't mind doing that. That's the problem. It's just I walked into this not really remembering that sort of feeling. <laughs> if I'm making rules up as I go, yeah, it's not going to be a game that I'll ever play competitively. I, 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 because you just have to argue with other people uh, be, because you'd basically be trying to convince each other that, you know, what you view as the right situate the right interpretation or make up new rules type situation that just comes along is, is better than theirs and that's just no fun you know i mean you don't want to waste the time trying to make your arguments out uh, it's one thing when you're doing it solo coming up with the arguments counter arguments yourself and making a decision but each person has their own like interests in a game and, yeah, sometimes they might just wave it and say, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, but other times, they're like, wait a minute, no, I, this makes as much sense, and it favors me, and the one you chose favored you. Let's roll a die on it, or let's discuss it some more, or whatever. And it's just like, oh, God, I don't want to deal with all that crap. If it happens occasionally, it's one thing, but I just feel like I've got to make shit up all the time, like every turn in this, this game system. Um... But anyway, a little bit more fire into here, not much happening. Uh, can't figure out what to do with Marmont. And I think, actually, there's probably advantages to me not pressing him and not trying to do anything with him. So I'll just move without picking up fatigue. That'll allow me to you know, position him where I want during the night or whatever. Or something. I don't know. Again, got to make up rules for the scenario to work linking the two days together because... Designer sure didn't think it was necessary or useful. And we're heading into one last turn of this day, whether or not... Yeah, I, I'm debating back and forth whether or not to do the next day, because it's just so clear that the coalition forces, the Bavarian Austrians, are just not able to hold up against the French troops. I mean, they just suck in comparison. Sure, there's numbers, but numbers don't matter unless you can get some kind of outflank or something going. And the way the river is, as far as I'm concerned, I can completely protect uh, the pathway down. I've got options on whether or not uh, t brushing this aside should be easy. I found there's units that are like, this isn't Splenny's, it's someone else's out of command and control with morale penalties. Let's try to send it where it's supposed to go. And it's just a matter of, geez, I, I don't see how I can prevent the advance to Frankfurt. Uh, Hanau is not going to stop it on its own. And stuck behind the river here, I just don't know. 
Now I'll look at what the setup is supposed to be and see how much behind that I am. I just feel like the French artillery just won the day here uh, across the board. There's some, some casualties on the French side, but not a whole hell of a lot. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, this poor unit. But the, the Austro-Bavarians have just taken so many fucking hits. And I mean, you can just look at it with the destroyed units piles. I got two destroyed units on the French side and a whole, whole clump there. With the, the, the morale state, the Austrian army, the Austro-Bavarian army is unable to, to function. Um, and now there are more French troops. Marmont is in play. There's going to be more coming in. Now, granted, I'm trying to get them off the board, but I think the only thing that I really have to get off the board is Marmont. I think everything else is kind of allowed um, to pass more freely. The only real question is whether or not there's any reason this huge artillery powerhouse is sitting where it is. Uh, there is. That's what my orders are, and I've been plinking away at things that are re retreating, but in terms of tomorrow or the next day of the battle, whether or not it makes any sense. Um, it's protecting the road, but man, is it a heavy investment. An investment that could scare the shit out of this cab that's out here. Okay, there's that stupid infantry unit still. Anyway, I, I slept like five or six hours this afternoon. <laughs> like I went to sleep after work and slept through and... But a big part of it is just sort of this, I don't want to face anything. And I sure don't want to face this. And so like, I want to go back to sleep to avoid this and everything else in life. <sighs> Forever. I finished up the scenario. Uh, doing the last turn, not hard at all. You know, I mean, just a simple mechanical task. But now I've got the hard task of figuring out what the next turn is. Now to me this looked like uh, not a complete blowout but everywhere where the French connected with the uh, coalition forces they drove them away. Uh, the big problem was getting everywhere I needed to go to clear the way namely down here um, prior to the end of the scenario. <laughs> a you know, I could have sent Freon this way. I felt like it was important to clear the river here. Um, then assessing the victory points, and we'll take a quick look. So the river, I'm saying that there are no allied units north of the Kin Kins uh, Kinzig. And saying that 30 points goes to the French. If that doesn't, this is a complete blowout in favor of the coalition. Um, and obviously, I could have diverted a unit into the woods, and there's almost nothing the French could do to prevent me from crossing. They would basically have to uh, cordon the river everywhere. Uh, of course, they would cause more losses, and it would be horrible for the next day, and it would make no sense, and this whole victory condition doesn't make sense, but since I'm playing two days, I can ignore it today. Tomorrow, there's just as bad. Uh, and then the losses, a half point per step, as far as I can figure out, including the units that retreated, that's worth 35 points to the French. So it came to 65. For the coalition, the losses they caused to the French, because most of them were on guard units, uh, actually were quite significant point-wise. So they caused 23 points of losses. Um, the exit, well, I forgot to do this. But on the last turn, I actually could have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I'm riding completely on the road, so I get a couple extra movement points. Um, I could have sent this off to give word about what the situation is. So I'll do that and send that uh, up that way. And that'll be on the detached units. I, I mean, obviously I've exited units, but they didn't count as good units to exit. Um, so I'll give them the 20 points for that. And then a unit anywhere on the road from Leipzig to Frankfurt, well, we stayed alive on the board with units down here. Friant couldn't get there, the Cav couldn't clear it. So that's another 20 points. 
So that gives the Austro-Prussian, uh, sorry, the Austro-Bavarians 63 points. An incredibly close game on points. Uh, which means, yes, I will figure out what I'm going to do um, and set up something for the next day. And I will kind of do that as an intro. I was planning on fussing with the decision on whether or not to do that. But given how close the point scores are, uh, I'm saying this, you know, the French failed in their goal, which was to clear this road on the first day. Uh, they got, you know, a minor victory in terms of points, but again, you know, if the Austrians had wanted to, or if this counts as north of the Kinzig, you know, uh, there's an issue. But anyway, I'm trying to play the forces reasonably rather than, um, and again, that's how you have to, you can't take the rules literally in this game. You just cannot, in the victory conditions and whatnot. And I think that has been a vein throughout the, uh, the entire series, is that, look, there are just some things. Don't take them literally. Figure out what they are and make up your own interpretation for them. And maybe the game kind of works. Because <laughs> I, I do remember early on, in, in, even in the Azure Wish, with the Azure Wish ones and with the Waterloo, kind of thinking, this is more of a game kit than an actual completed game. Uh, they don't tell you which rules to play with. They give you a whole bunch of different pieces that almost sort of work. Uh, they don't nail down the victory conditions well. They don't nail a lot of things down. And so I think the problem is more me, although I have to say that three battles in Germany, uh, I don't know. The fact that it relies on what ifs for the, the Jena is really the issue. And of course the siege is kind of a flop uh, as well. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> It was disappointing. This one, how disappointing is it? I don't know. I mean, this is not the kind of exciting battle that generally is going to be covered uh, simply because it's this weird rearguard action or actually retreat action busting through, you know, something that's trying to slow them down. And, eh. The overwhelming power of the French is, I don't know, you know, I mean, the goal is to clear that road. It didn't have to happen on day one, and I, 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 just, I just don't know. It's interesting to have this kind of circumstance. I just, uh, I feel like when you actually put it on the table and start playing it, it's like, well... You know, this is the kind of thing that you don't expect people to make a battle out of. And I've got mixed views on that, which is like, well, it's cool to give a circumstance that's not normal. I don't know how cool it is. Like, if the representation, if, it, if the victory conditions were stated differently, they could just express that what the French really want to do is control this road, you know? And the sooner they do that, the better. And that the coalition wants to stop them from doing that and work losses in with that. And it's kind of what it's trying to express, but it's not... It just doesn't do it perfectly. It has this stupid gamey possibility available and all kind of crap like that. All right. I'll figure out what the second day is going to look like based on today's end.